All right, this video is going to be on U substitution. So U substitution is very useful in integration. Uh, the reason it's useful is because it reverses the chain rule. So if you guys recall with derivatives, as soon as we learned the chain rule, it kind of opened up the doors for us with derivatives. We could do a lot more. The same thing is true with integration. As soon as we learn how to do use substitution, it kind of opens the door and we can do a lot more complicated problems. So with use substitution, you're going to notice the problems look like this. So I'm going to go ahead and write it out. We'll see if you can kind of recognize it. So this is the chain rule right here. If you guys recall, this would be kind of like the result of the chain rule, the derivative of the outside, keep the inside the same, multiplied by the derivative of the inside. You can kind of see the chain rule here. So the way that U substitution works is you're taking a problem that's complicated and you're kind of substituting something in to make it look a little bit more simple. So what you do is you first establish your U and you let U represent the inside. So the inside of the function would be g of x. Then you find the derivative of that. The derivative of u is g prime of x. And then you rewrite the problem in terms of u. So I'm going to have f prime, and then I have u is replacing g of x. So I'm going to say f prime of u, and then g prime of x, and it was g prime of x uh, dx, g prime of x dx is going to get replaced with du. And then you ignore the rest of the problem and you just do this problem. So the integral of f prime of u du is just f of u, not f u, f of u, <laughs> plus c. And then you can go back and take the u and replace it. f of g of x plus c. And you'll recognize, oh, if I was to take this problem and do the derivative of it, it would, do, it would be the chain rule. It would be the derivative of the outside multiplied by the derivative of the inside. So this is my antiderivative right here. Okay, now to do these problems, um, I'm going to show you guys with two colored pens. Um, so just so you guys can see it for now, I think on the first day it might be helpful to have a different color. You don't have to, it is up to you. Okay, so here is our first example. <clears throat> we are going to integrate 2x multiplied by the square root of 1 plus x squared dx. Okay, so we are always going to start by saying that u is the inside. u is 1 plus x squared. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to say the derivative of u is the derivative of this. The derivative of this would be uh, 2x, and then kind of the chain rule idea, dx. All right. And so now I'm going to look and I'm going to replace this. I'm, I want to make sure that everything here is going to be represented in terms of u. So 1 plus x squared, this right here, all of this is now u. Okay. And then the 2x dx right here, all of this is represented by du. So this and this is represented by du. So now if I rewrite the problem just in terms of u, what I have is the integral, I got rid of that, I got rid of that, of square root u du. All right, this problem is going to be a little bit easier if I think of that as u to the 1 half. And now I'm going to go ahead and use my antiderivative rule with it. So I'm going to add 1 to the exponent and divide by that number, which is 3 halves. So I've got 2 thirds u to the 3 halves plus c. And at this point, I can go ahead and take the u out and replace it with 1 plus x squared, because that's what I had taken out. So at this point, I'm going to say 2 thirds. 1 plus x squared to the 3 halves plus c. That's my final answer.
All right, example two, let's do that process again. So this time I'm going to say integral of x to the third, cos of x to the fourth, plus 2 dx. Okay, again, the u always represents the inside. So here's my inside. So it's just like the chain rule. You always knew that you needed the chain rule when you had something that was inside the function. That's the same way that you know that you need u substitution when you can see that something is inside. Okay, so u x squared um, or x to the fourth plus two derivative of u is uh, four x to the third dx. Okay, so this right here, here's my u. Okay, now in the problem, I can see an x to the third and I can see a dx. I can see this, right, x to the third and a dx. I cannot see a four. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to divide by four. So I've got one fourth du is x to the third dx. So at this point now, I can see an x to the third and I can see a dx. That's actually in the problem. So I'm going to get rid of my x to the third, I'm going to get rid of my dx, and I'm going to say, okay, one-fourth du replaces that. Okay, now I can rewrite the problem just in terms of u. So typically people are going to take that one-fourth and they're just going to move it to the front. All right, so I've got cos u du. The antiderivative of cos u du is sine u, so I've got one-fourth sine u plus c. There's my antiderivative, and at this point I can go ahead and replace the u. So that's one-fourth sine, and then for u I'm going to say x to the fourth plus 2 plus c. All right, third example. All right, we've got the third root of 2x plus 1 dx. Okay, u equals the inside, 2x plus 1. The derivative of u is 2 dx. Okay, so if I look in the problem 2x plus 1, there's my u right there. Now, I need to see a 2 dx in the problem. I see a dx, but not a 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and divide that 2 over to the other side. So 1 half du equals dx. So now I can see the dx in the problem, and I'm going to sub that out for a 1 half du. All right, now I can rewrite the problem in terms of u. I'm going to stick that one half in the front, third root of u du. The problem is going to be a little bit easier for me if I write that um, radical in terms of a rational exponent. So that's going to be one third. So I have u to the one-third. I'm going to go ahead and add one to that. We're dividing by four-thirds. There we go. Okay, so I've got three-fourths u to the four-thirds plus c. I cannot forget that one-half. I almost forgot it, but I can't. Okay. All right, so I've got 3 eighths. Now for the u, I've got 2x plus 1 to the 4 thirds plus c, and that is my final answer. Okay, so those were some indefinite integrals. Now we're going to go ahead and do a definite integral. So here we have from 1 to 2 of 1 over 3 minus 5x squared 
dx. Okay, so the inside, u equals 3 minus 5x. The derivative of u is negative 5 dx. Okay, so here is my u down here. And then I do not see a negative 5 sitting in the problem. I do see a dx. So that means I need to go ahead and divide that negative 5. So negative 1 fifth du equals dx. Okay, so I do see a dx in the problem. Now I can get rid of that dx and I can call this negative 1 fifth du. Okay, so as I rewrite this problem, I have 1 over u squared du. I do have the negative 1 fifth in the front. I can't forget that. Now, I cannot leave my interval from 1 to 2 because that 1 to 2 was actually in terms of x. It was not in terms of u. So if I want to rewrite this problem in terms of u, I have to make these intervals in terms of u as well. So I'm going to say u, I'm putting a 1 in for x. 3 minus 5 times 1 is negative 2. Okay, so this is negative 2. Plugging a 2 in. 3 minus 5 times 2. 3 minus 10 is negative 7. They are backwards. Yes, that's fine. Um, if you want to fix it and put the smaller number on the bottom and change the sign in the front, you are more than welcome to do that, but you don't need to. Okay, it is up to you. It is totally fine. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this um, as the exponent right there. Okay, so I've got negative one fifth uh, u, negative two plus one, negative one. Mm, that negative is going to cancel with that negative. I'm going to have a one-fifth u to the negative one. Okay, so I'm going to have a one over a five u. Did that hurt anyone else's brain? That hurt my brain. Okay, evaluated from a negative two to a negative seven. Okay, so I have... 1 over negative 35. I guess I don't really need a parenthesis there. Minus 1 over negative 10. The common denominator I think I could do here would be 70. I'm going to go ahead and move the negative to the top. So negative 5 over 70 um, plus, oh gosh, that's not a 2, that, that's not a 5, that's a 2. Whew. Okay, move the negative to the top. Negative 2 over 70 plus 7 over 70 equals 5 over 70, which is 114. Got a little weird there, but we did it. Okay, one last problem before we call the video good. We're going to do the integral from 0 to pi fourths. Sine of 2x dx. All right, so u is the inside. That's 2x. The derivative of u is 2 dx. I can see a dx in the problem but I don't see a 2. I see this 2, but that's from the u. All right, I don't see a 2 right here, so I need to go ahead and divide that over. Okay, so this is our u right here. The dx is 1 half du. So I can go ahead and start writing the problem in terms of u. I've got a 1 half, the integral, and then I've got sine u du, 
I do not have the interval from 0 to pi fourth because that interval is in terms of x. I need to rewrite the interval in terms of u. So I'm going to say u, I'm plugging in 0. 2 times 0 is 0. u of pi fourths. 2 times pi fourths is 2 pi fourths, which is pi halves. All right. So now I have the antiderivative of sine u is negative cos u. So I've got negative 1 half cos u evaluated from 0 to pi halves. I need to picture a unit circle for that. Okay, so this is 0, 0, this is 0, 1. Okay, that's not 0, 0, that's 1, 0. Okay, so cos of pi halves is 0, so this is negative 1 half times 0. This is 1 half times 1, so we have 0 plus 1 half is 1 half. 